Hi and welcome to today's video. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to implement the Outbox pattern in Spring Boot. But before we delve into the implementation, let's understand what the Outbox pattern is and why it's necessary. In an event-driven architecture, the goal is to notify subscribers about events, such as new database entries. Here's a simple scenario. We initiate the new transaction to ensure the possibility of rollback in case of an error. Then we perform our insert statements and generate an event in the event bus. Finally, we commit our transaction. However, consider this scenario, where the commit fails for some reason. In this case, the database changes are rolled back, but the event remains in the event bus. Subscribers are then notified about an event that was rolled back, which is bad. To address this issue, we can adopt the outbox pattern. Instead of directly writing to the event bus, we store an entry for each event in a separate database table within the same transaction where we create the entity. A scheduler routinely checks for entries in our outbox table and dispatches the events to the event bus. Subsequently, we can either delete the outbox entry or modify its status. This ensures at least one delivery attempt. Essentially, it means the event may be delivered more than once, especially if the commit during which we delete the outbox entry encounters a failure. In such a scenario, the event has already been delivered to the bus, but the scheduler will detect the entry again and rewrite it into the event bus. For the outbox pattern example implementation, I initiated a new Spring project in IntelliJ. If you are using a different IDE, you can achieve the same by visiting start.spring.io. I assigned a suitable name to the project and opted for Kotlin and Maven. However, if you prefer Java and Gradle, that works equally well as the underlying principles remain consistent. Once I named my base package, I proceeded to the next step where I choose PostgreSQL, Spring Data JPA, Spring Web, Flyway migration, test containers, and finally Spring for Kafka as dependencies. If you encounter any difficulties following along, you can access the project through the link provided in the description. For the initial setup, I configured the database connection for a local PostgreSQL instance by utilizing a pre-prepared application.yaml file. Additionally, I created an application-test.yaml file where I specified the DB connection for the test container. Following this, I pasted a docker compose file containing PostgreSQL and Kafka. This will come in handy during our application testing phase. Subsequently, I ensured that the application successfully launched using the docker containers and verified that the Maven build was successful. In our example application, the goal is to create tasks. To achieve this, I established a straightforward database table named task, comprising only an ID and a name. Subsequently, I crafted an entity term task entity, encompassing a UUID and a string for the name. Following this, I set up a JPA repository for our newly formed entity. Within the service package, I introduced the task service along with the model class task, sharing the same fields. Despite the model and entity's close resemblance, I prefer maintaining a clear separation between my service layer and persistence layer. Next, I implemented a class named task repo, acting as an adapter between our service and the JPA repository. It takes the service model, maps it into an entity, saves it to the database and ultimately returns a new copy of the service model. Consequently, I implemented the create method in the task service, which presently simply invokes the task repo. I also established transaction boundaries by incorporating the transactional annotation. With our foundational setup in place, which we'll expand upon later with the outbox logic, I conducted a simple Spring Boot test to ensure everything functions as expected. This integration test will prove beneficial as the complexity of the entire system increases. Having established the task creation functionality, we can now proceed with the creation of our outbox table. To achieve this, 
I authored a new flyway migration file encompassing the creation script for the task outbooks table. This table, in addition to an ID as the primary key, includes the task ID, a reference to the task intended for the event bus, a created at timestamp utilized later for selecting the oldest entries first to ensure proper processing order, and a boolean sent to bus indicating whether the entry has been forwarded. I crafted an entity class and a service model class for this table, along with creating the JPA repository and the adapter repository in the same manner as when establishing repositories for the task class. Following that, I adapted the create method in the task service to not only generate the task, but also create an entry in our outbox table. This involved creating a new task outbox object with the appropriate values using the tasks ID for task ID, the current timestamp for created at, and false for sent to bus. I saved this object to the database using the repository I had just created. Given that this occurs within the same transaction as creating the task, any error during the commit prevents the creation of both the task and the task outbox, maintaining the overall system in a consistent state. Lastly, I introduced a new test in our integration test suite to confirm that everything functions as expected. To facilitate this verification, I incorporated a helper method in our JPA repository to confirm the creation of the Outbox entry for our task. Now that we've covered task creation and writing to our Outbox table, let's move on to the final part. Setting up a scheduler to check the Outbox and send the event to the bus. But before we dive into that, I'd appreciate if you could subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful or learned something new. Feel free to share your feedback, whether it's positive or negative in the comments, so I can enhance future videos. Thanks a lot! Before we can dive into implementing our inbox logic, a bit more groundwork is needed. Firstly, I incorporated Scatlog, a library that prevents multiple instances of our application from executing the scheduled job concurrently. It might be a tad much for our example, but I aim to provide you with a setup that's nearly production ready. I had to create a new database table, I borrowed the schema from the GitHub and then crafted a scheduler config where I enabled scheduling and configured Scatlog to use the JDBC template log provider, ensuring it utilizes the table I just created. Following that, I configured Kafka by creating a Kafka config class annotated with the enable Kafka annotation. I added a method annotated with at bean that sets up our Kafka producer to serialize values as JSON into Kafka. Finally, I appended the bootstrap URL for the Kafka setup, located in the Docker compose file from earlier. I also made some changes to the model, specifically in the outbooks entity where I include the task as a field instead of just the task ID. I'll talk about the reasons later. This required moving the model entity mapping to its own dedicated file. With all tests passing smoothly, we are now set to begin implementing our outbox logic. I introduced the service class named task outbox service task with the following responsibilities. Firstly, it retrieves the next batch to deliver to the event bus. Utilizing the batch size parameter to determine the number of outbox items to fetch. Subsequently, it publishes the task attached to the outbox entry to the event bus. Finally, it marks them as sent and saves the status to the database. To retrieve the next batch, I added a find all not sent method to the task outbox repo, along with a corresponding method in the JPA repository. That employs the pageable class to limit the size of the result set. In the task outbox repo, I invoke this method with a page request that limits the result set to the given parameter and specified that the items should be sorted by created at, so we receive the oldest entries first. In our service, I executed our new repo method and stored the result in a variable called batch. Subsequently, I created a new service named event bus service which encapsulates the Kafka template.send method. This method requires a topic name for which I use tasks, the tasks ID as a key and the task itself as payload. I added the event bus service in the task outbook service constructor to utilize it 
and for each entry of our batch, I invoke this method. Now you can see why I refactored the model. I can access the task via the outbox entry instead of having to fetch it manually. To mark our outbox entries as sent, I added the new method into the task outbox class, which returns a copy of itself but with the send to bus field set to true. I pass this copy to the task outbox repos save method to persist the result. Next, I require the scheduler that would frequently execute our service to ensure timely publishing of events. I created a class named task outbox scheduler and implemented a method called publish batch annotated with the add scheduled annotation with a fixed delay string of 1000, indicating the scheduler runs every 1000 milliseconds or every second. I also added the scheduler log annotation to ensure only one instance of our application publishes to the event bus, thereby avoiding conflicts. Finally, I called our service method. Now let's verify if the code works by implementing our final test. Off screen, I introduced logging to the methods we've implemented so far to have some tracking of our process. Additionally, I included the availability library in our dependencies and you can find the relevant changes in the Git history. For utilizing an embedded Kafka in our tests, I used the embedded Kafka annotation with one partition and configured the port to be 9092. Subsequently, I crafted a new test method similar to the one above, but this time checking for send to pass equals true. Given that the scheduler runs in a separate thread, I employed a vitality to wait for the scheduler to complete its task. Let's give it a try. And it failed. It appeared that our current Kafka producer configuration couldn't handle UID as a key. To simplify matters, I modified the event bus service to use the UIDs to string method, thereby sending a string instead. On the next attempt, our test passed successfully. Let's review our logs. Prior to the task creation via our test, the scheduler had a run where it found no tasks to process. Then, our task service created both the task and the outbox entry. In another thread, the task scheduler executed again and discovered one item to publish which was the one we created. It proceeded to publish the task to the event bus and update the task outbox entry accordingly. And there you have it, we've effectively implemented the outbox pattern. This marks my first non-short video and I'd love to hear your feedback. Did you appreciate the step-by-step -step approach or do you feel it could have been more streamlined? Once again, you can find the link to the GitHub repository in the description. Thanks for watching and until next time, see you.